Well, hey there, Abernathy Antelope football fans, Ty Horsford, voice of the Antelopes with you here today as we've got our biggest Abernathy Antelope pregame show of the season as the Abernathy Antelopes getting ready for a state quarterfinal matchup with the number one team in the state of Texas, uh, the Canadian Wildcats. This is Ty Horsford, voice of the Antelopes, uh, here to spend the next few minutes with you as we get you ready for that state quarterfinal matchup. And man, is it a doozy, a top five battle of teams in the state as you've got number one ranked Canadian at 13-0 and and the fifth ranked 12-1 and Abernathy Antelopes. Friday night, 7 p.m. at West Texas A&M's Buffalo Stadium. Uh, interesting fact about that, the first high school game to ever be played uh, in the brand new Buffalo Stadium at West Texas A&M. This just its first year in use. Uh, West Texas A&M just finishing up uh, their college football regular season. And so a wonderful sight for a big time Texas panhandle matchup between the Abernathy Antelopes and the Canadian Wildcats. Let's take a look at some game notes about this one, if you will. It is a rematch of last year's state quarterfinals. As a year ago, the Canadian Wildcats ousted the Antelopes from the playoffs, a 19-7 win uh, for Canadian last season. Uh, Canadian, they went on to be the state runner-up as they won the following week in the state semifinals uh, before losing the state championship game 21-16 to a very good Newton uh, ball club. Uh, so the state runner-up, defending state runner-up Canadian Wildcats. Uh, both of these teams, winners a week ago. As uh, the Abernathy Antelopes in convincing fashion, 62-14 to in the regional semifinals uh, over Friona at a foggy Lowry Field at Plains Capital Park in Lubbock. And equally as impressive, the top-ranked Canadian Wildcats uh, they got a 55-28 victory over the previously ranked 6th ranked Cisco Lobos. And so uh, both of these teams' big wins uh, last Friday afternoon on Black Friday uh, to set up this Titanic matchup. It's a matchup uh, that prognosticators all across the state have been predicting since the season started. And we can finally talk about it, uh, the Abernathy Antelopes and the Canadian Wildcats. Winner of this ball game uh, advances to the Class 3A state semifinals of Division II, and they will meet the winner of the Gunter Tigers Holiday Eagle Battle. Uh, that is the Region II state quarterfinal matchup uh, taking place this weekend. Let's scout the opponent uh, a little bit, if you will. Let's talk a little bit about the number one ranked uh, Canadian Wildcats. It's Canadian, we mentioned, they're the reigning state runner-up. Uh, offensively, uh, the Wildcats are prolific, uh, putting up big-time numbers, 51 points per game, giving up just 14 defensively per game, so outscoring their opponents 51 to 14. And offensively, it's as good of a dual-threat offense by far uh, that the Antelopes have seen in 2019. They go for almost 450 yards of total offense per game, over 200 rushing and over 200 passing. Uh, you've got to cover your bases as a defense against this Canadian Wildcat ball club. Canadian, and to be, to be specific, 248 on the ground, 201 through the air for this Canadian offense. Uh, they run a version of the air raid. They spread it all over the field. Uh, Canadians got multiple guys that can beat you at different positions. A very talented receiving core, um, a talented quarterback. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, or let's just go ahead and talk about it right now. Why not? Uh, players to watch for the Canadian Wildcats. Uh, you've got a senior quarterback in Grant McCook. Uh, McCook, you're going to hear his name a lot, 171 of 254 passing for 2,158 yards on the season. He has tossed 23 touchdowns uh, compared to nine interceptions on the season. Nine interceptions sounds like a fairly big number, but it's really not when you throw the ball 
as much as the Canadian Wildcats do. Uh, he's also rushed for 74 yards per game uh, and 18 touchdowns. So a, a very talented senior quarterback in Grant McCook as he's accounting for 41 Canadian touchdowns so far in 2019. Uh, you've got junior running back. You've got a guy by the name of Hayes Huffstedler. Huffstedler, a name you're probably going to remember if you uh, paid attention to this matchup a year ago. Uh, the junior running back leads the Canadian Wildcats rushing attack. 105 rushing yards per game, and he has found the end zone 26 times on the ground in 2019 for the Canadian Wildcats. And then this may be my favorite name on the Canadian roster. Uh, you've got a guy in junior receiver, Twister Kelton. Uh, Twister Kelton leading a very talented core of receivers for the uh, Wildcats. 63 yards receiving per game. And he has gone for six touchdowns receiving the ball as well for the top-ranked Canadian Wildcats. And then we talked about that Canadian defense averaging, uh, giving up just 14 points uh, per contest. Uh, that's led by senior defensive linebacker Scott Saul Escamilla. As Escamilla, 11 tackles per game. And if this stat that I looked up is correct, this is according to Max Preps, but 32 tackles for loss, which is just an outstanding number, um, defensively uh, for the uh, defensive lineman, Saul Escamilla. Let's switch gears just a little bit. You see how talented uh, of a ball club the Antelopes are going to be facing in the Canadian Wildcats. I think you're going to see a lot of similarities in production numbers uh, for the Abernathy Antelopes as well. Offensively, the Antelopes are equally as prolific, almost 48 points per game uh, for Abernathy. Defensively, Abernathy has just been uh, a juggernaut, just giving up eight points uh, per contest. So Abernathy outscoring their opponents 48 to eight. And as we talk about it every week, but as prolific uh, as that offense has been for the Antelopes, I'm not so sure that uh, those defensive numbers uh, even more impressive for the Abernathy Antelopes. Uh, you've got a team that is averaging, again, a, a dual threat offense, just like Canadian, maybe choosing to run the ball a little bit more first, uh, this Abernathy Antelope Ball Club, but they've proven uh, that they can beat you down the field with a big play passing game as well. You've got over 400 yards of offense per game uh, for this Abernathy Antelope offense to go with those 48 points uh, per contest. And the Abernathy Antelopes are rushing it for 264 yards uh, per game on the ground. They're throwing it for over 100 yards per game as well. But a very uh, dual threat offense being presented by the Abernathy Antelopes come Friday night. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some players to watch for the Abernathy Antelopes. Of course, you can't talk about Abernathy without talking about senior quarterback Bryson Daly. Uh, the four-year starter, uh, the Army Black Knight commit. He'll be heading to West Point in the fall. Uh, 74 of 136 yards passing for 100 or for 1294 yards uh, and he's also tossed tossed 18 touchdowns through the air also the team's leading rusher 160 um, rushing yards per game to go with over 100 yards passing per contest your ultimate dual threat quarterback uh, in four-year starter Bryson Daly, you've got a sophomore athlete, Jess Hole, and I call Jess an athlete because he can play just about any position on the field. You might see him come in and do a job at quarterback. You might see him catching passes from Bryson Daly. You might see the ball get to him somehow in the backfield and he runs with it. He's an outstanding um, punt returner, kickoff returner, special teams guy as well. Uh, Jess Hole can do a little bit of everything, over 30 receiving yards per game um, to, to lead a core of big play antelope receivers. Um, again, we mentioned how vital he's been in special teams for the Abernathy Antelopes as well. And we mentioned uh, that he can play quarterback. 
Uh, that could come into play a little bit on Friday as well. Not because uh, Bryson Daly won't be able to. Obviously, he can. But we have seen that different times this year, the antelopes mix it up and do some different things. So we'll kind of see how that goes come Friday night at Canyon's Buffalo Stadium. Also, keep an eye on senior receiver Nicholas Dionda, 29 uh, receiving yards per game. Uh, he's caught the most receiving touchdowns for the Antelopes, five of them on the season in 2019. He's one of the, the, the leaders in that receiving core, and when Abernathy needs a big play through the air, a lot of times Daly is looking for Nicholas Dionda. And then we talked about uh, that juggernaut of an Antelope defense uh, led by Dante Flores, uh, and Matthew Dionda, two extremely talented linebackers for the Antelopes. Flores, 10 tackles per game, 12 tackles overall for a loss. He's been a beast uh, in opponents' backfields. And you also have Matthew Dionda averaging eight tackles per game, uh, a leader on this Abernathy Antelope defense. And so that's kind of a tell of the tape, if you will, very briefly uh, for the Abernathy Antelope. Says this, this is setting up to be a doozy come Friday night. The Antelopes and the Wildcats from Buffalo Stadium. Uh, again, just a couple of keys to the game. Uh, in addition to Bryson Daly's offensive production, it's been there every single week for the Abernathy Antelopes. Uh, where does some more offense come from for the Antelopes? Obviously, you're dealing with an injury. Uh, to running back Avery Clarkson. He will not be available on Friday night, unfortunately, for the Antelopes. So you're going to look to a talented receiving core, uh, guys like Jess Hole as well. Um, you may see some uh, some carries from Tanner Timms, but the Antelope's going to probably work on some things, I would assume. Uh, if I know Coach Daly in practice this week, um, to try and display on the turf Friday afternoon, or Friday evening, rather, at Buffalo Stadium in Canyon. And also, can Abernathy, they're not going to stop it uh, completely, but can they contain a dangerous passing game by the Canadian Wildcats? Um, and, and when I say contain, don't give up the big play. Keep receivers in front of you. Maybe make some big plays and get a pick or two and, and turn that into some momentum. But can Abernathy contain a very dangerous passing attack by the Canadian Wildcats? Uh, and then I say this because this is what Abernathy struggled with in the meeting a year ago. When you've got scoring opportunities for Abernathy, you've got to take advantage. You've got to cash in. As Abernathy missed several scoring chances in this matchup that they lost 19-7 to a year ago. But it's a new season and the Abernathy Antelope looking to pull the upset of the number one team in the state, the Canadian Wildcats, on Friday Night. Again, we're going to have that broadcast for you from Canyon beginning with a 645 pregame show uh, followed by a 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, man, Friday cannot come soon enough. It's the Abernathy Antelopes, fifth in the state and the number one ranked Canadian Wildcats. The game that everybody's been talking about since the season started um, potentially is finally here, the Antelopes and the Wildcats. And we can't wait. Uh, man, I hope we're here next week on a pregame show chatting about a state semifinal matchup and reliving uh, an upset of the state's number one ranked team. Uh, the Antelopes can do it. We'll see if they do on Friday night. The Abernathy Antelopes and the Canadian Wildcats. This is Ty Horsford, voice of the Antelopes. Thanks for watching, and we will see you Friday, Antelope fans. Go Lopes and happy game week.